I don't know. The older I get, the more I think everything has been a lie. Everything in the biggest sense of the word. Everything. Am I even here? Are you even there? Am I a projection? Are we in the matrix? Probably. Good afternoon. It is a beautiful evening here in Worcestershire Shire. And today I want to answer some of your questions. This morning I posted on my YouTube community page and on my Facebook page saying I was going to do a Q&A video. And would you like to submit some questions? Many of you use this as an opportunity to show your comedic skill. But we'll get onto that in a minute. I've had to break all of the questions down into categories because there were so many. We've got the pro EV people. The quick questions that require quick answers, the controls and conspiracies questions that are perhaps longer answers, the car questions, and then some personal questions at the end. So let's kick straight off with Steve787, who says, why don't you tell people you are a conspiracy channel? Well, Steve, would you like my YouTube channel to come with a warning on the on the packet, like a, like some cigarettes? Maybe it could say, caution, this YouTube channel may actually challenge the things that you believe to be true. The only thing with conspiracy theorists is that usually they're trying to find out the truth. So if you'd like me to have a warning label that says that sometimes my channel might post things that are going to make you question your worldview, um, then then maybe we can do that. But no, it's it's not a conspiracy theory channel. It used to be about buying cars, then Corona hit, then the world went sideways, and now it's basically about cars and stuff that I think you should know because I find them interesting. And that's it. Sometimes I might buy a car, make a video. Sometimes I might look at an article and go, that is mental. I've got to make a video about that. And I might make a video about that. Sometimes I might go on a road trip. Uh, so to answer your question, to some degree, it's my channel and I'll, I'll do what I like with it. If you've got suggestions, please put them in the comments. But um, that's that really. Right, now we're into the questions from pro EV people. Crop Circle Critic says, since you think any fire anywhere is an EV combusting, do you think the sun is a giant electric car going up in flames? No. The sun is a giant ball of gas and we need it to survive. Um, I also quite like it when I could feel it on my skin, but we haven't really had much of that this summer. Uh, next up, why do you talk about batteries only lasting three to five years when there are 10 to 15 year old electric cars on Auto Trader right this minute? Why do I only talk about batteries lasting three to five years? Good question. I, I guess because that is mostly what I've been exposed to. I am more than happy to do some digging into 10 to 15 year old electric car batteries. I did actually make a video comparing the price of an early Nissan uh, Leaf and that had horrendous battery life. But that I think is the only video I've done about 10 to 15 year old EV batteries. Happy to do more. I will have a look at what's on Auto Trader. And maybe I can, I wouldn't buy one because they're still above the Jeff budget. Um, but if you've bought a 10 to 15 year old EV or you own a 10 to 15 year old EV, contact me. I'll have a test drive. Will the government take the power from my EV and power wall while I sleep and feed the grid at times of shortage, says Paul Philipson. Um, yes. Yes, they probably will. If they know you've got power in your EV and in your E power wall, they'll probably try to nick it if the grid is failing. So, yeah, no conspiracy there. Sorry, uh, Steve787. Should have warned you there that that was getting slightly conspiratorial. Will the government steal your power from your EV? Probably yes. That's one of the main reasons I don't like EVs. Um, I just believe that it's much easier for the government to track you and um, control you if you're driving a giant iPhone. Quick ones. Steve Mumbling 7720. Where'd you buy your tinfoil hats? <laughs> I make them myself. Ketchup or brown sauce? Brown sauce. Never ketchup. Uh, do you think pineapple should even exist on pizza? No. Indian curry or Thai food? Thai food. What do you think about the Blade Runners? Agree with their tactics or no comment? Agree with their tactics. More people should be doing that. We need more Blade Runners. 
Um, I'm sorry, but if you're one of these people that lives in this cul-de-sac that's now saying, oh, they're putting a ULIS camera up outside my house. I won't be able to get off my drive without paying £12.50. I'm sorry. If you filled in the consultation and you're part of all the Facebook groups and you've written to your MP and you've written to the Prime Minister and you're part of all the action groups and you've been to the protests, you are perfectly within your rights to go and get a hacksaw. Probably take you quite a while with a hacksaw. Um, but go and get a, a petrol-powered angle grinder and lock the damn thing down because you have done everything within your power democratically and legally to stop those cameras from going up. The science is dodgy, the motives are dodgy, so they need to be torn down. How often do drivers of open-top cars get crapped on by birds? I have always driven open-top cars and I have never yet been crapped on by a bird, so never. Right, that is the quick ones over with. Let's do controls and conspiracies. This is an interesting category. Um, which individual corporation, country or organisation would you bankrupt if you had the chance? Good question. I think what I would like to do is go back to 2008 and let all the banks fail and rebuild a better system that is not based on fractional reserve banking. That's what I would have done. I'd have let the banks fail and built back better, but not in the way that the built back slogan intends to build back. I'd have done it based on people and communities, and I'd have just let it all fall apart, not prop it up. So there's your answer. Um, if we're fed up of sending money to OPEC nations or oil will become more expensive to extract, what fuel do you propose we use in our cars? That is a good question. Um, petrol and diesel, there hasn't really been much development in propulsion of cars for, well, pretty much 100 years. I'm not against electric cars and I'm not against hydrogen. They just have to work. This is the thing. And for them to work, you need infrastructure. And for you to have infrastructure, you need a government that believes in it. We don't have that in the UK. They're not trying to push you all to EVs because they want everybody to have a better life. They want everybody to be in EVs because they can control you better. It really is as simple as that. The grid can't cope. The power isn't there. Um, and there's no political will to actually do it properly. So I don't know. I'm open to all and any suggestion, but at the minute, I don't have a better form of propulsion than, you know, what goes in your, your, your petrol tank. The petrol tanks at the back, not the front. I do think we should drive a little bit less. I do think we could cycle more and walk more and be healthier, but none of these, like, anti-car um, agendas are actually to do with getting us fit and healthy. They're just about control, basically. Simple as that. Uh, I have a 1974 MGB GT historic vehicle. It has historic vehicle status. It is tax exempt. It is ULES exempt. Do you think it will be exempt from road user charges or is that wishful thinking? Sorry, Brian. Pretty sure that is wishful thinking. I think if they roll out this road user charging, everyone's going to pay and everyone's going to be tracked all of the time. And that's why I've been making videos about it. Uh, Fast Freddy, as an aside from the paper mile that is coming, do you think the powers that will be will use the myriad of cameras for speed enforcement? Even one mile an hour over the limit will be able to be monitored. I think, Fast Freddy, it's even worse than that. I don't think when they put the ULES cameras up and all these other cameras that are going up all over the place, they didn't just go, we need some, keep, we need some cheap cameras that can capture images they've gone all out and i call me a conspiracy theorist but the cameras can probably do it all they can probably do facial recognition they've probably got audio and i think this is coming out that the ULES cameras particularly can already do all of that once the cameras are up <laughs> they'll use them for everything uh honestly you will be shafted when this camera network is completely up and completely operational that's why i keep making the videos when driving the motorways and you come across a uh, 60 mile an hour speed limit for pollution or whatever the sign says, why is there no exemption for those super duper electric cars unless it's just a money making thing? You've answered your own question. It's about money and it's about control. 
Um, has anyone worked out how much extra electricity power generation and network infrastructure investment is going to be required for net zero aims of every household to have a heat pump and an EV? Very good question. What's it going to take for every household to have a heat pump and an EV? Well, we already know that it's not physically possible for every household to have an EV. So I'd imagine it's the same for a heat pump. Um, the whole net zero thing only works if they get rid of a lot of the people. <coughs> New pandemic coming this winter. Dave Hughes, what's behind the ice wall and do the guardians of the ice wall know what's there? I don't know what's behind the ice wall. Maybe it's Hitler and all the aliens. Um, but there's too much strange stuff about Antarctica for it to not be true. So I'm going to put that one to the comments. What do you think is going on in Antarctica? What do you think about all these witness accounts of Antarctica actually being a giant impenetrable ice wall that you can't get past? And then afterwards, there's like a paradise or there's like a hollow earth and there's all people living inside the hollow earth and they've been there for years and it's actually tropical down in Antarctica and they're just lying to us about all the snow. <laughs> Tell me in the comments, did we really find Atlantis? Atlantis, Antarctica, they both begin with A. How do you wake up the public and get them to work together against the bullshitting greenwashing government? I don't know. I'm active in enough WhatsApp groups and I've been involved with a number of movements and pride and ego always trips up human beings i think if humans cannot get over pride and ego on who said what and who's leading what group and whose group's got the most members and why so and so said that to them and why he didn't post that in the group and why this admin didn't let this post go past and why this group won't attend and why this group won't support these guys we ain't going to get anywhere we have to uh let ego go completely your um your ego is not your amigo, basically. Uh, we've got to work together, otherwise it ain't going to work. Why, if we are supposed to be overpopulated and we have a housing crisis, are we importing men between the ages of 18 to 35 with no skills and no checks and giving them preferential treatment of housing? Um, I can't answer that question. I don't know. It stinks. That's all I really want to say about it at the moment. Coming on from that one, though, um, Night Narrator says, do you think we are going to be subject to another lockdown this winter? Yes, I think we are. The media is already teasing a new virus. The media is already teasing mask mandates. And I think most Tom, Dick and Harry's think, oh, a lockdown. Well, the last lockdown wasn't too bad. I think if they do another lockdown, right, it'll be a proper harsh lockdown. No messing around. They'll have people in the streets with clipboards and masks. And um, if you don't pass go, you ain't collecting £200. And no one's getting £200. I think if we have a new lockdown, it's pitchfork time. Uh, did we land on the moon? And how did President Nixon talk to the astronaut on a telephone when he was on the moon? I think you answered your first question with the second question. Nick... President Nixon was able to talk to the astronaut on a telephone because neither of them were on the moon. Um, OK, just very quickly, because there were a number of questions about the moon. Let me get this straight. In, was it 1969? In 1969, we managed to get together enough science and technology to launch a rocket that went directly to the moon. And when it got there, it orbited the moon. It dropped a pod from the rocket, which was orbiting the moon because it couldn't just stand still straight down the pod looks like it's made out of um tin foil and plastic and cardboard the dudes then walked around the moon for a little bit whilst broadcasting to the earth whilst having a phone conversation then they using no visible propulsion systems launched themselves back up to the rocket that was orbiting the moon to come back to earth what do you think how can the moon stay up there like that why isn't anyone worried about it falling down i'm very worried I don't know, because if you lie on your grass, right, and look up, you see stars, and then you, I don't know. It's all to do with um, time, space, travel, and the speed of light, and stuff that I don't understand. Because I lie there and I go, hang on a minute, the sky's the same as it was last night. And that doesn't seem to make sense, notwithstanding the fact that we're stood on a globe that is spinning really, really fast, but we can't feel it and all the water stays in the same place. 
<laughs> Getting a bit flat earthy there, isn't it? But I don't know, because none of it makes sense. But, okay, on that one, I have sort of distilled my thinking now to be that anything that is taught quite heavily in the early years of school is balls. And ancient Egypt, for example, is taught in the early years of schools, the, the basic narrative of ancient Egypt. And you look at it and you go, hang on a minute. The scientists that have proven that the Sphinx is way older than we're told it was and the pyramids. And we don't know what they thought. And they line up on these lines across the globe with all these other pyramids all over the place. And there's pyramids in virtually every country. And the pyramid wasn't a tomb. There were no bodies found inside it. Maybe it's a direct energy device. Um, so they teach Egypt in schools. They also teach the globe in schools very early on. Uh, what else do they teach in schools very early on? Well, like the class system and kings and queens and all that sort of stuff. So uh, it's probably all bulls, isn't it? I don't know. The older I get, the more I think everything has been a lie. Everything in the biggest sense of the word. Um, everything. Am I even here? Are you even there? Am I a projection? Are we in the matrix? Probably. Um, right, that's it. <laughs> that's it for conspiracies now. We're on to cars. Some questions about cars. In a crazy scenario where you've got the backing of a multi-billionaire, billionaire, would you or could you design a long-lasting car that's easy to repair and enough room in the engine bay? It's probably a 2006 Kia Picanto. Seriously, that, that probably is my dream car, your dream car, and the answer for society for the masses. Small, lightweight, cheap car with a small petrol engine um, that's economical, cheap to buy, cheap to run, and small and compact and easy to repair. So there you go. Um, if I became a billionaire, I apparently would buy a fleet of 2006 Kia Picantos. Shane Hardy, how do you manage to find your bargain barges? The old Volvos are a different kind of beast that I'm starting to want. Um, I'm always browsing Facebook Marketplace. I'm always on eBay. I've got notifications set up for certain searches. But most importantly, I've got 75,000 almost subscribers, 6,500 on Facebook, and they all send me cars to buy. So most of these cars come to me. But this one, which I'll get onto in a minute, in a minute, I bought accidentally because I was trying to buy a Chrysler PT Cruiser convertible and this popped up as a as a sort of, oh, you might also like this. So there you go. Another great question coming up here. Why is LPG not widespread in the UK? What do you think about LPG? Seems like the UK is so much behind Europe in terms of LPG users. Yes, and LPG is decreasing in availability, not increasing. I don't know a great deal about it, but all I do know is the only LPG car that I've bought as part of the Jeff Buys Cars adventure was the Volvo 850T5, uh, which was the highest mileage car I've ever had, and it was still on its original engine because LPG is kind to engines. So surely, from an environment point of view, the emissions are better on an LPG car and the engines last longer. There's the answer. That's probably why they want to get rid of it, because it works. Coming on to some questions about this car and my other cars. Um, Ian says, how many cars do you own? And why is diesel in my area 15p a litre more than the rest of the bloody country? I don't know on the diesel front. The prices do seem to be creeping up again. My wife came home earlier on and was like, oh, have you noticed that the price of petrol is increasing? I was like, yes, everybody's told me already. Um, I own three cars. This, the Chrysler Sebring, my red Volvo 850 diesel estate and a Ford Fiesta 1.25 that I haven't done much with. It's currently parked up in a storage yard waiting for me to decide what to do with it. Are we likely to get any new large estate cars in the future or will wheelchair users be banished from the road as you can't get a wheelchair and shopping in a crossover or city car? Good question. Wheelchair users are being forced into larger and larger SUVs, it seems. Um, but if you're a wheelchair user and you're struggling to get a car that works for you, as I know many of you who are on the Motability Scheme and have emailed me are... I know motability users with wheelchairs are really struggling with the government's new set of like uh, motability guidelines. I will be doing a video on motability in the future. I'm sorry if you're one of the people that keeps emailing me saying, Jeff, where's your motability video? I, I, I need a bit more information from people. Paul says Volvo C30, timeless or pointless? 
I like the Volvo C30, so I'm going to say yes, but I need it in Twilight spec uh, from the first Twilight movie, and it's got to be a T5. So, yeah, I've not had a C30 yet, but I, I, I quite fancy one. Um, now, Red Pill Rachel says, what's that nice car in the photo, and can I borrow or buy it cheap, please? Full, clean UK licence, well earned. Um, it's a Chrysler Sebring. It's a rare, early Chrysler Sebring. They only made them in America. It was imported in 1998, even though it's a 1997. And it's the only one, I think, probably in Europe in this colour, unless anyone can correct me in the comments. If you want to borrow it, well, I don't know, send me an email. Um, do you want to buy it? Mm, it's not for sale at the minute, but it might be. David says, why are you driving a Sebring? I saw it on Facebook Marketplace. I quite like the look of it, so I bought it because it's a bit oddball. It sort of fitted a lot of the sort of Jeff parameters that I look for in a car. Um, it's oddball. It's cool enough. Uh, I could take it to a car show. I could take it to the tip. I did today, and it's got four seats. Well, yeah, four seats, which is enough for the amount of children that I have. So it ticks a lot of boxes for me. It was also very cheap. How did a guy in the UK end up with a Chrysler convertible? Not a great car, but as far as... As a fairly decent, easy-to-own vehicle for a sun worshipper, it's good. They sold a ton of them here in the States. Yeah, um, when I first posted this on Facebook, everyone was like, oh, no, it's a Chrysler Sebring. It's the worst rental car in California. And that's the sort of reputation that it's got. But I will do a proper review on it. 2.5-litre Mitsubishi V6 and a big meaty exhaust and no roof. And it was cheap. So there's a lot to like about my Chrysler Sebring. Another question about the Sebring. When you were in the passenger seat of your Chrysler, it looked like there were two electric window switches. What is the second switch for? Um, the door locks. You can lock the doors like that on both sides. Um, so there's the answer to your question. Up and over or down and under? Right, we're talking about reverse. Up and over or down and under? Um, which do you prefer? I think I like down and under, but that's because all my cars are five speed. So that kind of makes sense. You have reverse in the position where sixth gear would be. But when you have a six speed car, it all goes out the window. If you could bring back one obsolete car or feature in cars, what would it be? I don't think I would, but I would get rid of all the modern features that we don't need. The one that annoys me the most is push button start. I don't see what the problem is with having a key. And every time I drive my wife's one series BMW, which is push button start, because it's a 2014 or 16, um, it's push button start. And she always has to remind me to turn the car off when we get out, because no matter how many times I seem to click it, it doesn't actually just just give me a key that I take out and take with me. And that's simple, because the other thing with the wife's car is we're forever leaving the keys in it overnight, like parked places because we both forget to take the keys with us when we get out so if you want a bmw one series and you live in worcester uh help yourself keys are probably in it bruce says i need a volvo 850 t5 which model which fuel type um preferably above 30 miles to the gallon are they all four-wheel drive just in case i need ramming power in the future anything to avoid on any of the models um i'd avoid the four-wheel drive ones because they're extremely thirsty but my genuine answer to that, if you're looking for a Volvo 850, is buy a 2.5 non-turbo manual estate. Don't worry about getting a turbo. They're all kind of slow by modern standards anyway. Um, just get a manual car with a non-turbo. You'll never have any problems with the engine and you'll thoroughly enjoy driving it. That is my advice if you're looking for a Volvo 850. Perhaps I'll do a longer video on that one in the future. We're already at 23 minutes on this one, and I've still got some great questions to do. So stay with me. It's a bit like a podcast, isn't it? Lee says, what did you think of the Jimny you had on holiday? I'm using my daughters as a daily at the moment and love it. I loved it, Lee. It was fantastic. There was When I was in Rhodes, there was a poster, which I'll put up here, of all the different choices that we had for a rental car, and the soft top Jimny was the only choice. We had a fantastic day driving around the island. Absolutely loved the little Jimny. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, I wouldn't want to drive it on like a motorway or anything, but for pootling around a Greek island, perfect car. Also, another thing that makes the Jimny perfect, if you've got small kids and you're in the sunshine, you don't want your kids to burn but you can have the roof open for you and the wife and the roof closed for the kids, which is amazing. If we go anywhere in this car, in the sun, the kids are getting burnt and I have to rig up a shade over the back. But with the Jimny, it's done for you. 
Can we have a Jeff Banger rally a bit like the Rush to Rome event? Possibly in the future. Yeah, I like that idea. What's the one car you wish you hadn't sold? I guess it could be several cars. Do you know what? Last night, late at night, couldn't sleep. I was trying to buy a early Volkswagen Polo bread van, a round headlight model. I had one of those. I bought it off the side of the road for £300. It was immaculate and there was nothing wrong with it. I sold it for £600 and thought I'd done really well. That car today would probably be worth five grand, but it's not really about the money. I just, I want to drive one again. They're so simple. Little four speed, nothing on the dashboard, nothing to worry about. Lovely little polo bread van. I'd love that car today, but they're getting, well, they're hard to find. And then when you find a good one, they're really expensive because the Volkswagen scene tax has absolutely been applied. Right, that is the car questions. Now, getting into some personal questions in this long video. Andrew says, have the makers of your hat that you lost given you a new one? No, not yet. I've got to try and get one. This is my backup. I don't like it as much. It's not, it's a bit, it doesn't feel right. Probably because it hasn't been in the sea and in a river and in swimming pools and all the stuff that that other hat went through with me. Um, I'll have to get another one, the same model. So I'm working on that. Um, a very kind follower has also offered to post me one. He says he's bought one recently that he doesn't like wearing uh, and he's posting it to me. So new hat may be on the way, not from the manufacturer, but from a follower. What did you want to be when you were growing up and what do you do now? When I was growing up, I wanted to be Jeremy Clarkson. I wanted to make video. I wanted to be a car automotive journalist person, man. That's all I've really ever wanted to do. Um, I guess I kind of do that now, sort of, to some degree. Um, I don't review cars as such, but to be fair, modern cars, like if I wanted to go and get a job as an automotive journalist, there's a lot of cars that I'd have to review that just don't interest me. Um, you know, everybody wants to be Jeremy Clarkson, but there can only really be one Jeremy Clarkson. So you've got to find your own way of doing the thing that you enjoy in your own way without replicating what anybody else is doing because you're you, you're not anybody else. So I guess that's what Jeff Buys Cars is. It is me. I do do it in my own way. Um, one day I'll be reviewing a BMW X5 video coming soon. Next day I might be talking about ULES. Then I might be talking about some conspiracy theory to do with the pandemic. And then I might be writing a poem or reading a funny story. So um, yeah, I guess, you know, the Jeff Buys Cars YouTube channel, it's an extension of my own personality. And um, after you know, almost three years making these videos, I am now making a little bit of money from it, which is lovely. So it's a nice way to live. And yeah, am I doing what I thought I would be doing when I was growing up? No, because I had some kids and I never thought I'd do that. But uh, <laughs> story for another day. Edward says, is social media your only source of income and do you make a good living from it? Well, I'm absolutely not Mr. Beast. Um, British YouTubers earn a lot less than their American counterparts, which I think is why I'm not going to get into the like the ins and outs of YouTube earnings, because you can look at one YouTuber who's made three videos and they're a millionaire. And then you can look at a YouTube, look at a YouTuber who's made a thousand videos and they haven't yet made a penny. So it swings around about. I wouldn't want to rely on YouTube completely just in case something goes wrong. We want to put all my eggs in that basket. Um, but my the, the stuff I do with Jeff Buys Cars, with the car giveaways on Facebook and with YouTube is mostly my work at the moment. Um, it has been for a little while. I am in marketing and writing, essentially, um, but I keep getting sacked because uh, I'm a bit too much of a free thinker, to be honest. But yeah, usually I, I can be found um, getting paid to write small pieces for small scale niche classic car people. Um, I know quite a lot about classic Mercedes, put it that way. Where do you reckon your faithful old hat is now? By the side of the road, on the mountain pass, somewhere in roads. Knock yourself out. Uh, what does Mrs. Jeff think of you buying all these cars and have you still got the Amiga? No, the Amiga's gone. Actually, to someone who wanted to cart his mother around in it, I think they had a wheelchair. So, interesting point, based on what we said earlier on about estate cars. Um... Mrs. Jeff kind of like, she tolerates it. Um, you know, she's just, she finds it funny that I'm a YouTuber because she's not impressed by it. And I think that's probably a good thing because she probably keeps my, keeps my feet on the ground. But then whenever she tells any of her friends uh, that her husband is a YouTuber, they, they think it's like the best thing ever. But that's also because 
when she tells them that I'm a YouTuber, they think Mr. Beast money, and it doesn't work that way. Um, but I, I, I guess in some ways I'm, I'm a bit like an investigative journalist, so I think she says that to people as well, which sounds better than being a YouTuber. So maybe she's just embarrassed. Um, what is your favourite music to drive slash cruise to? Uh, I like Tropical House mixes off of YouTube. Go on YouTube, type in Tropical House. Uh, there's a couple of channels that I subscribe to. One of them is called Deep Mix, and I just love, like, Tropical House, basically. I could drive and work to Tropical House music all day long. Kygo remixes, that sort of stuff. But I generally have a fairly eclectic musical taste, but I am mostly an emo kid uh, that is stuck with sort of punk rock emo from the early 2000s, Death Cab for Cutie, Jimmy Eat World, um, and anything that falls into that sort of category. So that's that. What was the catalyst that made you wake up? Good question. I've always had a healthy distrust of authority and I've always from a very early age looked at the world around me and gone hey this doesn't make sense um but I have also made a video on this so I'll put the link in here um on my journey because it, there's more to it than that but basically I've just always felt that we're not doing things the right way around like five days on two days off work your whole life to then retire but then when you retire you're too old and you die straight away like none of it has ever made any sense to me um i always thought that i would you know uh fall in love and disappear that's what i thought i would do i also never really intended to live past 27 um but that was a decade ago so everything since then has really been a bonus um Getting on to Alan's question later about the meaning of life but we'll come on to that in a minute richard says when was the last time you had mushrooms I've never done mushrooms. Ian says, considering the current state of affairs, what party would you consider voting for in the upcoming general election and why? No spoilt ballot papers for this one. When will you hold the next Jeffel and will we get a Volvo option? Um, so let's deal with those one at a time. What party would I consider voting for? I need a party to come out and say that they're going to abolish net zero. I also need a party to come out and say that they are going to look into the links between the World Economic Forum and politics and how politics has been infiltrated by um, nefarious organisations. I don't believe in spoiling a ballot paper. I think that's pointless. Um, what they're going to do, they're going to count them and go, oh, well, everybody spoiled their ballot papers. So unfortunately, the people that get in are the people that were in before that you were all trying to get rid of. It doesn't work. Don't spoil your ballot papers. Don't check out of the system and say we're not voting. Um, do do pitchforks. Do do strategic voting. So more on that, I guess, nearer the time. Um, what is, when is the next Jeffel? September the 8th. Um, and will we get a Volvo option? No, it's an Audi TT or a Renault 11. Um, mailing list or Jeff Buys Cars Insider Group on Facebook for the details. I don't intend to talk about it on YouTube. Um, some general questions at the end then. We're nearly at the end of this long video. Uh, both sides in all recent wars have been funded by the same source. Who are the good guys anyway? We are the good guys, I think, um, which might sound like a really cheesy answer to that question. But what else are you going to do? You look at the newspaper and you don't get the right story. You speak to the people in the country and you don't get the right story. You speak to people on the other side and you don't get the right story. So what you have to do is take all those little snippets of information and run it through your own personal filter to work out what you think might be the most likely true story. You've kind of got to create your own true stories. But by being true to yourself and by trying to be honest and by trying to be a good person, we become the good people. And if there's enough of us, then the truth will always come out. I think that's my answer. If you had access to paradise, we've got some funny ones now at the end. If you had access to paradise, but you had to have either a tiny diet bordering on starvation or a forced diet of vomit-inducing gluttony, which do you choose? So I can have my own private island, but I am going to be always on the verge of hunger, or I'm always going to be too fat and gluttonous. I really don't want either. I don't like overeating, but I do like my food. I'm going to go for the first one, but can I have black coffee? Can I just have mineral water and black coffee? 
and, and then can I have my paradise? Because I reckon I could live on that. Uh, serious question. Hi, Jeff. I was a class one HGV driver, but since 2009, I was diagnosed epileptic. Do you think the standing of driving has got better or worse in the last 15 years? Since our younger years, do you think safety has improved because of technology? Cheers, Jeff. All the best, Tommy. I think cars have gotten safer, but people have gotten stupider. So, yes, there's more awareness about road safety, but there's more people on the road and more of them are idiots. So, I don't know. I mean, you're less likely to die in a car crash, but are you more likely to have a car crash? I don't know. I mean, I'd rather have a crash in a 2020 Range Rover than I would in a 1976 Rover. But I'd rather drive on the roads in 1976. I think they're probably better quality. And... Um, I don't know, you've got the whole rose-tinted specs things, but yes, you know, the A30 wasn't built and you had to go down to Cornwall on the side roads, but maybe that was quite an enjoyable experience. I don't know. If you were there and it was terrible, let me know in the comments. Uh, that is a 2020 Range Rover. Um, the meaning of life. The meaning of life, Alan. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's to enjoy yourself and to not be a dick. Um... But I'm struggling because I don't think the meaning of life is to live a repetitive existence where you do the same stuff all the time and you work to earn money to buy a house that you work to pay for because you've got to work more to pay for the house to pay for the kids that you had because you... I don't know what the meaning of life is. I think you kind of just got to take it one day at a time. I think there are people out there that thoroughly enjoy every moment of their lives. But I also think that that's only for Instagram. I think it's OK to be miserable. Um, so long as you know that you're miserable. I, I know when I'm miserable and I know that I am an ass to be around when I'm miserable. But I also I think that I'm quite am I quite I'm probably quite fun, maybe. I think I'm happy some of the time. Um, my wife would probably argue that. But in terms of the actual meaning of life, I think um, the meaning of life is to find your own meaning because I don't think it's the same for everybody. For some people, the meaning of life might be raising children. But if you didn't have the children in the first place, then your life wouldn't have any meaning. And does that mean that right up until the point that that child was born, your life was totally pointless? And do you really want to wrap up all the meaningfulness of your life within two children that are more children? Uh, do you want to wrap up all the meaning and, and your self-worth within your kids that are never going to appreciate you until they're in their late 30s, early 40s? Um, so no, I don't think the meaning of life is to reproduce. I don't think the meaning of life is to earn money and accum accumulate material things. Um, I'm, not I'm not interested in stuff. I'm quite proud of my, I went down to my, I've got a storage unit where most of our stuff is at the moment, and one of my prized possessions is a an £8.99 watch box from eBay that is full of cheap watches, most of which are um, fake Rolex. I've got a fake Rolex, I've got two fake Rolexes, I've got a fake Amiga, and I've got a fake Patek Philippe. But the reason those watches are in that box is because I quite like those, um, and every single one of them has a story of an adventure. You know, the Paytech came from Morocco. The Rolex came from Rhodes recently. Uh, the other Rolex was from Egypt. And I've got another Amiga that was from Egypt as well. And there's a story with all, all of those things. And when it comes to possessions, possession is nine-tenths of the law. But when it comes to possessions, like, I don't ever want to own stuff just for the sake of owning stuff. Like, if, if that item in my house isn't attached to a really good memory, then it doesn't really deserve to be in my house. So I don't think I'm a very materialistic person, so I don't find meaning in money. You know, if I have a really good month of earnings, all that makes me want to do is not work for four or five or six weeks. Like, I don't get the whole, great, you've had a really good month, you've earned loads of money, now go and do it all again like that it just becomes meaningless very quickly and i think that's probably why i've been sacked from every job i've ever had uh i don't know what is the meaning of life you tell me i, I genuinely haven't worked it out i think it's to get some sunshine and to get your bare feet on the grass and swim in rivers <laughs> uh, there's more to alan's question what came first the chicken or the egg 
Would you rather have sex with a goat and nobody finds out or don't have sex with a goat, but everybody believes you did? Chicken or egg? Dunno, depends if God made the world or not. And based on what I understand from reading Genesis, I would say no, he didn't. And that means we don't know why we're here. Which also means it's absolutely okay that I haven't yet found a meaning in life because nobody knows how we got here, let alone why we're here. So it's all right. Um, it's all right that you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s and haven't achieved any of your dreams yet and don't have any of the stuff that you feel like you should have because you don't need any of that stuff anyway. You are where you are meant to be right now and you are in charge of your own destiny, chicken, egg or not. Um, the goat question. Would you rather have sex with a goat and nobody ever finds out or you don't have sex with a goat, but everyone believes you did? This is actually a really easy one. Um, firstly, how do you have sex with a goat? Like, that's not going to work. Um, also, I don't want to do that, but I don't mind if everybody thinks that I had sex with a goat because I know that I didn't. It's like everybody going around saying you're a bad person, you're a shill, you're this, you're that, you're, 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 that, you're the other. I know that I'm not. So if there's suddenly a whole glut of YouTube videos saying Jeff Buys Cars is not only an anti-EV conspiracy theorist, he also had sex with a goat, um, I know that I didn't have sex with the goat. You don't know, so did I or not? Uh, I don't think I did, because I just I couldn't work out how to do it. Um, not that I tried. Or did I? Thanks, Alan, for that one. One car for the rest of your life. My Volvo 850 TDI. But if I was keeping it for the rest of my life, and the billionaire that was getting involved earlier on in the questions is part of my life, can I, he please pay for my Volvo to become a full-length ragtop? Properly, not like the one I built. Lastly, another bizarre question to finish with. Imagine not being married, but on a date. So I'm not married, I'm on a date, and you discover that she turns out to be a he. What would you say? Um, well, I guess if we got to the point that we were on a date together, then I must be attracted to that person and or very bored, which is Tinder, basically. Um, I don't know if I'd have got to the point where we were actually on the date and have not realised. Um, at what point in the date are we realising? Is it early on? Are we just getting drinks? Is it during food? Um, is she or he eating more than me? Uh, or is it later on in the date, you know, things are going well, coffee, um, in the Eddie Izzard sense of the word, you know, coffee with the president of Burundi. Eddie Izzard used to be funny before he was like, went all out with this woman stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Is it later on in the evening? Are we, are we starting to canoodle? Is that the point that I'm realizing? I just can't see it getting to that stage, but I would say thank you very much for a lovely evening. It's been great to chat. Um, but I've got to go. And I have got to go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, wow, 43 minutes of your questions. Imagine if I'd addressed every single question. I hope you enjoyed that sort of podcast style video. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments how you would react in those situations. Sex with a goat or not. Bloke that turns out to be a woman or not. Um, and yeah, do you want a tiny diet on an island or gluttony? And all of those other questions, let me know your answers in the comments. Have a great evening.